Justice and peace, stations of the cross. Jesus is condemned. No proper evidence, no justification for passing the death sentence. The crowd eager for blood. The self-righteousness religious leaders puffed up with pride and hypocrisy. Missing their power and authority, keen to be rid of this troublemaker who was constantly challenging them, highly too scared to do the right thing, trying desperately to distance himself, yet unable to wash himself clean of his involvement. Barbados, guilty as sin, walks free. How ironic, the only one free of guilt is the one who has to die, condemned by those he came to save. We see just injustice all around us, but how often do we challenge and confront it head on as Jesus did? Do we have the courage to speak up for those who have no voice or do we opt for a quiet life, hoping someone else will take charge? Lord, help us to think of others who place their concerns before our own. Open our eyes to look out for the outcast and the stranger, for it is then that we welcome you. Jesus carries the cross, the wooden cross, an almost unbearable weight, difficult to carry, no easy place to grip, hold. The wood, rough and jagged, tearing into flesh, somehow made heavier by the guards, fears, and harsh treatment. Betrayed by a kiss, sold for 30 silver coins, the price of friendship comes cheap. Denied three times over by a beloved disciple. Surely too much suffering for the one man to bear. We can be so wrapped up in our own lives that we fail to notice the pain of those around us. Lord, help us to be more aware of the problem that burden our friends, family, and all your people near and far. Open our hearts to their pleas and give us the desire to journey with them and help carry their load. Jesus falls for the first time. Weak from the beatings, pushed roughly along by the soldiers, stumbling blindly, sprawled onto the ground, bloody knees and grazed hands, searing pain, laughter and more shoving, yells of, get yourself up, looking foolish, utterly humiliated, all for our sake. The God of love. We all know the embarrassment of falling down and looking a fool in front of others, especially those who want to impress. Lord, grant us the gift of sensitivity that we may act with kindness and compassion to all people. Teach us to love unconditionally and to offer support to others if they stumble or fall. Jesus comes face to face with his mother, watching and waiting. A helpless bystander, just another face in the crowd. Flashbacks to that first encounter with the angel. Words too mysterious to take on board. A child. How can this be? Joseph's gentle acceptance. No recrimination. No harsh words. Then, the day we almost lost him, an ache tearing my soul in two. Even then, he was marked out as a special, more God than man, the miracles, signs, and wonders. Such love and compassion for the poor and the lonely, the hunger and the outcast, such love. And now this, the mob betraying for his blood insults, jeers, and humiliation. A sword pierces my heart. Mary accepted God's plan for her with humility and grace, trusting in his love and guidance. We are used to making decisions and choices 
based on our own judgment. Lord, grant us the wisdom to recognize that you alone can see a bigger picture. Help us to trust you completely, even when the way ahead seems painful and bleak. Keep my head down. Stay out of trouble. It's nothing to do with me. I don't want to get involved. This guy, Jesus, seems like a good sort. Can't work out what they got against him. Better not argue, though. Not when the guards are waving spears around. My, this cross is some weight. No wonder the poor fella couldn't manage it, especially given the beatings he had. How often do we come across unfair situations and say nothing for fear of getting caught up in the crossfire? Lord, take away our uncertainty. Make us bolder to act when others need our help so that, like Simon, we can share their burden as a sign of your solidarity. Do we come across unfair situations and say nothing for fear of getting caught up in the crossfire? Lord, take away our uncertainty. Make us holder to act when others need our help. So that like Simon, we can share their burden as a sign of our solidarity. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus, moved to pity by Jesus' plight. The crown of thorns digging deep into his forehead, blood and spit mixed together, sweat and tears streaming down, a face so humble and full of compassion. A sudden spontaneous moment pushing through the crowd, not stopping to think how the soldiers might react. No time to be trouble for her own safety. Veronica gently wipes his face with her veil, eases his suffering with a loving gesture, a small act of kindness in a world around, bounded up in hatred and cruelty. Do we have the confidence to go against the crowd and make friends with someone? Who is unpopular or unloved? Like Veronica does it, makes us feel better if we are able to do something, however little. It may seem to help someone in need. Lord, give us the strength of purpose to stand up for the truth, not to be troubled. About the back, about compassion. Jesus falls for the second time. Another fall, another humiliation, now wanting to see this thing through, hoping against hope that there might be another way, an easier way, that God would not require such a difficult sacrifice, that this cup will pass me by. But no, I must suffer falls and humiliation, become truly human, to share fully in the utter degradation endured by so many. This way, I can look them into the eye and say, I understand your pain. I am one with you. Looking foolish and familiar in front of other people is an absolute nightmare. We cringe for ourselves and for other people when they fall. Lord, inspire us to show true compassion to those who fall in whatever way. Teach us not to be judgmental, but to welcome the opportunity to show your love to them. The woman of Jerusalem weep for Jesus. Unbearable suffering, it's bursting with sorrow. Desolation that knows no bounds, a river of tears, uncontrollable weeping and wailing. Oh, women, weep not for me. Weep rather for yourselves and your families. A suffering not understood in human terms. The ultimate sacrifice, the perfect act of love to redeem a fallen world. In our broken humanity, we find it impossible to fully comprehend 
the death of Jesus. Love for us, a love so perfect that it knows no bounds. Lord, give us the grace to see through your eyes so that we may respond to the cries of our brothers and sisters with generosity and compassion to the love as you love. Jesus falls for the third time, yet another fall, this time worse than the two before, scarcely enough to strengthen to get up again. The agonation pain is almost too much to bear. Truly a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, bruised and broken, degraded, despised, demoralized, crushed and pitiful. A lamb led to the slaughter, never even opening his mouth. Sometimes it seems things just can't get any worse than you've reached rock bottom. And you have to face your problems on your own because no one else really appreciates what you're going through. Lord, we know that you have promised to always be there for us no matter what we do, but it can be hard to believe that a promise when we feel utterly abandoned and alone. Encourage us to put our trust in you and turn in you good times and bad. Jesus is stripped of his clothes, naked and exposed, nowhere to hide, no way to retain even the smallest scrap of dignity. Teased and taunted, jeered and mocked as a king, but now worse than the poorest beggar in the land. Stripped to nothing, all trappings of dignity roughly torn away, the very opposite worldly power and majesty, endured so patiently, no word of protest or reproach. We can hide. Who are we with our own clothes, keeping others at a distance? Strip bare, all pretense is taken away, and we can be seen for, the, for who we truly are. Lord, give us the courage to peel away the layers that we have built around ourselves for our own protection. Help us to embarrass our volatility as a means of coming closer to our brothers and sisters, and to you. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Does this man's humanity to a man know no bounds? Concentration camps, ethic cleansing, tortured, mindless violence, murder, rape, gun crimes on the streets, suffering caused by damage, to God's wonderful creation, a man nailed to a cross, left to die, slow angling to death in the heat of the midday summer. What superhuman reverse of love are required to truly forgive the tormentors? Heartful to overflowing with love and compassion. How many times do we Nail Jesus to the cross with our own harsh words, lack of concentration for others, our self-centeredness. Lord, help us to overcome the dark side of our natures and to focus on the light so that we may reflect your love in the world around us. Jesus dies. Such a dreadful way to die. Long drawn out. Every breath, a new torture. No quick, easy bullet or poison cup. The mouth on fire with unbearable thirst. Lips parched and dry. A drink is offered. Vinegar, not water. Bitter tasting and sour. Smarting against the cut lips. Opening up the wounds. Making the blood and pus ooze once again. The bitter vinegar, like the bitterness of the mob, clamoring for blood. The end is near. The sky is darkness. 
it is finished. When people let us down, there seems no way forward. We can glimpse a little of the suffering. Jesus interred in his final moments on the cross. For a moment, it seems as though even God has deserted him. But we know that without Jesus, death, there could be no resurrection and no promise of the eternal life. Lord, when the problems of life seem to overwhelm us, remind us of that. Tomorrow will bring a new day full of new possibilities. Jesus is taken down from the cross. My name is Joseph. I come from Arthaethia. That's a Jewish town. I have been a follower of Jesus for a while now. But secretly, okay, I didn't join in with the other members of the council. When they turned against Jesus, but I didn't exactly do much to stop them. I was too afraid for my own safety. Well, maybe I didn't stand up for Jesus while he was still alive but I can do something for him now. I plucked up my courage. Pilate seemed surprised at the request, but he said, yes. I think he was already starting to feel guilty. He knew he should never have allowed him to be executed. How often are we bound by what people might think rather than just getting on with doing the right thing? Lord, forgive us for the times when we lack bold boldness. Give us the courage to act without worrying about how it may impact us. Take away our hearts of stone and give us the hearts of fire that burn with the love for you. Jesus is placed in the tomb. A hurried burial I race against the time to finish the preparation before the Sabbath begins. Joseph and Nicodemus, both secret disciples, fearful of the Jews, go together to prepare the empty tomb. For Jesus' body wrapped it in a clean burial garment, placed it in the tomb, and a roll, a large stone over the entrance to prevent anyone getting in and disturbing it. The faithful group of followers trudged home, their hearts heavy and sad, unsure of what tomorrow may bring. Joseph and Nicodemus kept the lowest profile of all disciples, and yet they were the ones who took center stage in the final scene of Jesus' death. Like them, we may be slow to make commitment, but God's patience is boundless. He never gives up on us. Lord, be our inspiration on our journey that we may work faithfully to bring about your kingdom of love and justice and peace.